Hello, welcome pen friends. Welcome to another singles ink profile. Um, we're not in the middle of any kind of series right now. I'm just kind of looking at some single inks. And today what I wanted to do was KWZ Cappuccino. This is a, a warm brown um, and it's wonderful. And it was sent to me by my pen friend. Here's her initials. All the way from Poland this sample came. And that happens to be where these inks are made. So um, let's dive right in. I'm, I've been really excited to try this and, and uh, got some things to show you. But first, let's do the bath test. Let's see how it, you know, uh, survives and how, uh, ink, uh, how water resistant it is. We'll find that out before the end of the video, I think. Well, I guess I'm afraid of spills. I just had one of my cats, a Willie, jumped up here and it was like a gymnastics routine. He was trying to get to the... He was trying to get to this, and he actually ended up getting stuck, and it was lucky I was right here that he didn't end up with the water on his head, because it's a cold day, but, okay, there it is. We'll let that continue to do its work there, and we'll hop right into the Rhodia Gold Book. <clears throat> it's where I started out with this. Um, I really like this ink. It's darker than one of my other favorites, but it's just kind of right in the middle uh, it, it's not too dark and I really like it, it um, I like this brand as a whole the KWZ every ink I've tried by them I have liked it you know I have felt like it had the properties I was looking for with the especially with the flow and um, saturation so those are two things I really really look for um, this may be available a lot of other places but I kind of stopped when I found it at Anderson pens because uh seemed like that's where I would order it from uh, this particular one and right here is in the broad nib and the serendipity and then I changed down into the uh, the Lamy fine nib and I really like it I like how it holds its own in the fine nib <clears throat> and I'm going to show you this is the chromatography <laughs> isn't that interesting I mean, I just, that's, it always surprises me. I'm so new to that portion of, of studying inks that it was like, oh, okay. <laughs> very, very much surprised me. But there it is, and it probably means more to most of you than it does to me. <laughs> so, oh, I wanted to flip back and show you a couple of just real quick comparisons. So, so here's today's KWZ Cappuccino. And then I wanted to go back to Robert Oster Cafe Crema. This is one I really love. This is warmer and lighter colored. But if you were looking for something darker, you, you can probably already see that the cappuccino is darker. Um, it, it really is. And it's, it has some shading, though I wouldn't pinpoint that as the main thing. We'll, we'll look some more here uh, at some other samples. But then now let's look back at one other one. And that is Tasha Golden Wheat. Here it is right here. And this one seems to be somewhere in the middle between the Robert Oster Cafe Crema and today's ink. So here it is. And let me flip back. And here's the cappuccino. It's really hard because I can't show them at the... I can hardly show them at the same time. It doesn't really do you any good. But I, I feel like for myself, that's pretty interesting. <clears throat> very nice to, to compare them. You know, we've got a lot of choices. <laughs> that makes it hard sometimes. Sometimes it's impossible to choose. Okay, let's get right into the notebooks. We'll start out with the Loistrum 1917. And I've got it on here. I kind of had skipped a page, so I put it um, on the left here. And here it is. Um, I really liked it on this paper. And I was happy that the broad nib did not bleed through. Now, it tried to where I laid it on heavy with a paintbrush, but I know now that my bullet journal, I'd be able to use this ink just fine in either one of those nibs. Um, as you can see, it kind of uh, lightens it a little in, in the broad nib. It's kind of nice. But it doesn't look entirely black in the uh, Lamy Fine nib, so that made me happy too. Okay, and then stepping down a little into a CVS Caliber notebook. Let's see how it did in there. <clears throat> Okay, here it is right here and uh, typically that kind of flattens the color out a little and sometimes lightens it up but this has enough saturation to deal well with this paper even in the fine nib and so that's all I needed to know here um, it didn't bleed through even when I painted it on with a paintbrush that's amazing okay and then uh, 
this is the one I think showcases the ink color itself the best, this little Nemesine notebook. I, uh, yeah, I'm going to end up having to get another one of these because I really like it. Okay, here it is. Um, I made a little bit of a mistake, so let me explain. I <laughs> I started writing with the the serendipity, so the writing that is on this side is with the broad nib and the, the Yowo nib. Um, and then I realized, oh, I'm trying to be consistent. I want to use the Mo Moon Man Mini, so I changed over into that. And I have to say, I like it better in this other nib. It actually ended up being a good mistake because I could kind of compare it. And I believe it's because in the beginning it darkens so much it looked black. And then it lightens up and toward the middle there, you know, it kind of looks brown. But I still really favored how it looked over here. That That's nice uh, for me. That that captures the, the middle of the line um, of this brown. How I like it to light, look coming out of the nib. So, Okay, and then our last notebook is the Live Notes uh, by Pen Gallery, and it's the 68 GSM. So let's look at it on here. Okay, and here we are, right down here. And I, I'm doing it very consistently, you know, broad nib up here, and then switch down into the uh, fine Lamy Fine nib. And I, I really like this ink. I mean, I could definitely write with this. I could write letter after letter with it and I've written one letter already with it and plans for more today because before I switch out colors I do um, that's a test of an ink too if I don't really want to clean it out of my pens and I'm not not in a hurry to try the next ink then I know that I really kind of like it and uh, KWZ, Robert Oster, Tasha I'm beginning to formulate favorite ink brands so Okay, while we have this out, let's pull out our first, you know, paper sample, which is the Tomoy River 52 gram on white, and we can begin to kind of compare them, if I can get it held up right, I, and I think that gives us a little bit of comparison. Keeping in mind that the white does brighten things up, so we're on white on the right, and we're on ivory or kind of a cream color on the left, but um, I really like it. I like it on both, but if, you know, just to be honest, just right, just glancing at this, I like it better on my old standby in this color. Isn't that strange? I I think it's what it does with this, and then, um, hmm, it could strictly be the white. I may have to start using the cream just so that we get a closer comparison. So, uh, th those are some things I, that have been rattling around in my mind lately. Okay, so we don't have too many samples here, but let's get on top of them. This is the Claire Fontaine 90 gram French rule paper, and <clears throat> pretty pretty on there. And there was no trouble with it feeling too dry. Um, you can tell that it keeps up as far as the saturation, and it and it looked good, and uh, no bleed through. Let's see, I didn't show you that. Okay, it tried to bleed through on the 52 gram. Um, Tomoy River paper. <clears throat> I have to remember these things and if I don't I need to go back because that's important. Um, there was no bleed through whatsoever on the 68 gram Tomoy River paper. Sorry for that confusion. Um, here's the Rhodia dot pad 80 gram. Whoops, oh wow, I really, it looks like a cat had an ink party and he could have. Uh, <laughs> very easily. But here it is um, in the broad nib and the Lamy fine nib. Um, this paper just tends to be very pleasing and somewhere right in the middle. <clears throat> and here is the Hamlin Optic 90 gram white, bright white paper. I thought it looked really nice on there. Definitely not dr not too dry. It, it behaves a lot like the Claire Fontaine. I keep forgetting to turn these over. You know, there's so little bleed through that I forget, but it's important. <clears throat> so, okay, here's the last one. Here's the Hewitt Packard Laser Premium 32. This is just so thick and nice paper. It'll hold anything, I think. Uh, and here it is. I was trying to determine whether it did any feathering. I don't think so. You know, it's if it is, if it is making it feather at all. It's nothing that bothers me. So, huh. There you have it. 
Okay, now let's look at the color comparison panel, which is one of my most fun things <laughs> for me. Um, and probably why you're here if you're here, because I do like to compare colors. Um, this, you could see the pigment of the ink, but it's pretty much disappeared. Definitely all the brown went bye-bye. And you could still read it, but hmm, that's interesting. We'll see how it, it looks in the final analysis. Okay, so here's our panel for today. And, uh, the, of course, the ink of the day is right in the middle. And this was a little bit challenging. I was just not finding anything that really matched. So, But that's okay, because that gives us our comparisons. Um, we've, I've already done a full profile on Robert Oster Cafe Crema. And it's down here at the bottom. And it is brighter and lighter. And then I've done a profile on Tasha Golden Wheat. And that, that one um, kind of, I don't know, it seems to fall in the middle where uh, of these two anyway. It seems to be more medium brown. <clears throat> this one tends to be just a little darker. And then uh, Birmingham John Arbuckle Coffee Bean. I've got a full profile on that one too. And that one um, is sort of out, of out of range of the others, but it's a unique, beautiful brown in it by itself. This one's brand new to me, the Diamine Ochre okra and uh, I've you know I've yet to really explore that one so and then down here we've got one that pelican edelstein smoky quartz that's very interesting and probably would give this uh, kwz a run for its money I would imagine <clears throat> and then we've got the much uh, the monteverde scotch brown is darker it's in fact it may be the darkest brown on this panel I'm not sure but it looks it and then I put the Tasha Cha on here, or T, because uh, that's upcoming, but it's it's a lot redder and it really didn't belong here. Sorry about that. I just, I got excited, you know. Um, it'll have to be on a whole different panel when it gets profiled because it's, I know I have more that look like that. So that didn't, uh, that didn't amount to a hill of beans, but. And then this one here has not been profiled by me yet. But I think that that one is another one that's very similar to KWZ Cappuccino. And uh, since I love J.R. Bond as a brand as well, I can't wait to try that one. There's just not enough time for everything I want to do, but I think we all feel that way. And my mother, my mother tells me every time I say that, she says, everyone is given the same amount of time. <laughs> so I was like... Okay, <laughs> it's true, it's true, isn't it? Oh my goodness. I mean, that always stops and makes me, you know, stops me and makes me think. You know, I guess we, we all make choices, in other words. <laughs> so, okay, here we go. Here is the visual journal, which was fun. Um, uh, but I'm dying for an ink that'll just do something fantastic. Like, you know, I, I'm looking at Nick Stewart's videos and I'm thinking I need to get me a sample of uh, Rome burning or something, you know. <laughs> I, I want one that does like multiple colors and everything. And yet this was nice. And, and for landscape, you can't beat it because you got all that, that autumn color kind of coming out and does all kinds. In fact, <laughs> right now it's a little weird. My, my little horizon line was off, so it looks like snow, but you wouldn't have all that probably brown like that. It would be, I mean, the trees look gray in the winter in Vermont. So, and then here's our little Petri tree, Petri dish uh, experiment over here where I just put the water down and did the ink blobs. And that's interesting, but we've all seen it more exciting with colors that release all kinds of different, you know, shades. So that's how that came out. <laughs> all right. Okay, so I just wanted to talk a few minutes about, and that's pretty much the same. You know, it has um, it has left enough on there that you can read it if you were a detective, but, you know, certainly the Postal Service wouldn't do too good with it, I don't think. So I wanted to talk a little bit about what's next, um, although, you know, I kind of keep it free-flowing between the ink flights. But I do, I would like to get into some um, full profiles of my uh, bottled inks and I do have a list that I'm working off um, so I, I know which ones that I've done which was done by a generous pen friend and you know just looking through that nothing really leaps out at me but let's see I think I had one that I was hmm 
I guess I must have closed the book. Oh, Purple Rain. If I haven't done that, and I'll double check to make sure. That is one of my favorites. And then over here on the Tasha inks, I have uh, two left that I haven't profiled. One is this blue, this sky blue or uh, Sora. And then the other one is the tea or cha that's the brown, which, you know, I'm, it may be even for folks asking for brown and green, I may have kind of <laughs> overstayed the, the welcome on those colors. But these are some of the ones that I'm thinking about doing. And then the ink flight will be coming and there's a big excitement about that that I can't wait to announce. But I'll wait until I do my unboxing for that. So I'll be looking through these. Um, I think I also wanted to do that ink that I'm so perturbed with. Because I I probably haven't... It's that Robert Oster lipstick red. If I do a full profile on that, it could actually improve my uh, the my full appreciation for, for the ink, I think. Because I know it looks good in a broad nib. So anyway, that's, that's just a little bit uh, to think about. And... Let me know, what did you think of this uh, KWZ Cappuccino? Um, you know, I think it's beautiful, and I think we've got an awful lot of browns to choose from, way beyond what I have. This is just some of the ones that I have that are anywhere near the ballpark. But, uh, goodness, look at what that, that golden wheat does in a, in a watercolor application type thing. That is just amazing. But anyway, I do love this ink, and I'm so happy and grateful to have the sample and, and write with it. It looked great on, on my letter, and I'd like to hear what you think. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.